G'day people, I'm Sharon. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a practical lesson in how to do my quilt as you go method, back and front. This is design number 83 in my set and I'm matching, putting everything in the same direction. I'm starting to sew now. And this is just a zigzag with a width of five and a length of two. When I get towards the end, I have a look and see, is this one side a bit longer than the other? Yes, that side's a bit longer, so I'm gonna give this one a bit of a tug so that they match up better. Lock stitch to finish. And cut off. So I'll do another zigzag over the join here. I need to get two whole strips done and then I will join them together. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I've got two whole strips together and then I will join those strips. So the first part of the process, take two, butt them up together and zigzag over the join. You are at liberty to change the width and length of the stitch if you want to. That's just what I find comfortable to use. Here is the zigzag that I use to join the squares together. You can see that this part of this square and this part of this square matched. And as a result, these lines carry on across multiple squares. When I join the rows together, I will make sure I have them oriented the same way so that these lines will also carry on across the whole quilt. So the next part, pretending this is a whole strip like this is, join them together. And once again, make sure they're oriented the same way because that helps the design to just keep going across the entire quilt. If you are using different designs in every square, it doesn't really matter which way you orient them. Although it does help to actually put things up the right way. So there's a bird here somewhere over this side. You don't, don't want your bird to be upside down. And now where I'm at the point where I'm going to join two strips, you can see that shape there is the same as that one so these are going to be all oriented the same way I put it under here and I'm about to start so exactly as I did before I'm joining these with a zigzag When I start getting towards where the joins come across, I can have a look and see this one, this is a bit shorter than that one, so I need to give it a bit of a tug. And that's how I go about joining the strips. Having joined my two strips together I'm now looking at the back of this quilt and as it happened I did this one with cream thread on the back which makes it easier for you to see and it's the King Tut Jewel of the Nile thread I've got on the front. Now I want to cover this on the back because it's a quilt and I do want it covered. I have made half inch tape from a fabric I cut my fabric at about one inch, ran it through my tape maker, and now it's half an inch. Putting this on, I want it to go on there. So 
and I'm just going to now go to straight stitch oh, that's interesting um, I've got my machine actually set to move the needle around but in case you don't know um, I'm presuming that this is actually a universal thing that happens with sewing machines but, um, you can see my needle there I'm on a straight stitch so this is where the needle is going to stop to drop so the needle drop position for my straight stitch as I move what would be the width key in a zigzag watch what happens to my needle and if I move it in the other direction So I've actually got a whole range of places where I can do a straight stitch. It will always be a straight stitch, but where it drops in here varies depending on where I have got my machine set. Now the far right position on my machine is 9 because this is a Memorycraft 15000 which has a 9mm wide opening under here where the needle can go down it's if you're buying feet for your machines then you either have a five or a seven or a nine millimeter wide foot that you need to buy so far right would be having the thing set at 9.0 for the back i'm going to move my needle position over that way by two millimeters so I'm going from nine back to seven so it's not as far over to the right as it could be and you may notice as well that I'm using the F foot which is a foot that we use for um, stitching satin stitches and it's got a bit of a place underneath it where satin stitches and things that have a lot of stitch build up in it can go through and what I'm going to do is put this piece of fabric down where I want it to be which is covering the two lines and put my foot down and I'm running now the edge of this foot or of this fabric up at the edge of the foot now so we're going to do a straight stitch um, I've got mine set to 2.8 I don't need it to be smaller than that and all I'm doing laying down my fabric we're on the back and here we go so it's just a matter of there are the two lines that I'm trying to cover because they're the two lines of stitching on the front that were made when these bits were embroidered and I want to cover them and by having my needle drop position sorted for me I'm not actually looking at what my needle's doing anymore what I'm looking at is where that foot is compared to the edge of this piece of fabric I want to move this needle over to the left side so that I can stitch this side of the tape there and now I'm going to move the width key on my straight stitch which will obviously just change the needle drop position and I'm moving it back to 2.0 so there it is at 2.0 fabric in here and I'm doing exactly the same thing now part of the reason I want I'll just put my needle down part of the reason I want this to be two mils from the side is that that means these rows of stitching I'm doing here on the back 
are not likely to end up actually impinging too much on the patterned part that I want to keep on the front. So now that I've got my needle on the left, same as before, keeping the edge of this fabric at the edge of the foot. And I'll just keep going down there and when I've finished, we'll turn over and do the one on the front. So on the back, it would make sense to actually have this backing fabric for each square being the same colour as this. Now this is the back and you can see two rows of stitching. And that's done with the Jewel of the Nile thread, which obviously does not match perfectly on this um, fabric, but it happens to be what the embroidery was done on the right side. When I turn over now, I'm actually going to get the Jewel of the Nile thread out and just have a purple thread, top and bottom, and that will match better with this fabric. So now we're looking at the front of what I've just done. So on the back, I've put on, whoops, put on my fabric there and you can see the two lines of stitching either side. But on the front, that goldy colored stitching there, that's what was sewing on the tape at the back and there's some here as well. So now my front stitching only has to cover pretty much the same width as it did on the back. So I've got my piece of tape here which I'm about to apply. And I'm starting at what was the end of the previous Let's put that foot down. Now when I move the needle this time I'm not going to move it quite as I'm going to move it a little bit closer to the edge. So we're still over on the left hand side where I had it set to two. I'm now going to take that down to one. 1. 1.0. And this means that when I stitch these ones on the front, it will be slightly wider than the ones on the back. Um, and I've now got the machine completely threaded up in purple, but I'm really doing exactly the same thing. I've just got that needle a little bit closer to the edge. And it is, of course, going through quite a few layers of fabric now. But I'm doing the same thing. I'm just putting my fabric over there. And stitching down. And you do get good top stitching if you use your needle drop position as a way of um, working out where the needle's going to go. It's much harder to do it just by eye. When I've finished this row, I will come back and show you the next side of it. So I'm back at the beginning again, and you can see where I've stitched that on and how close to the edge it is when I've got it, my needle drop position set to one. I'm about to do the same thing on this side, stitch it down. To do that, I need to put my needle drop position at 8.0 already. Hopefully, you can see that first row of stitching there, the coloured one, that was done when I was putting this piece on the back. There is actually some purple stitching here on the back, but because it matches the fabric, it's really hard to see. So I'll move my needle back over to the right, so I'm changing that what seems like a width selector. Now if you have a machine that has a seven millimeter wide is as far as it goes, 
Then on the back, you do your things at two and five. And on the front, you do them at one and six. On the nine millimeter machines, it's two and seven. And on the front, you do them at one and eight. And now we'll start sewing on the right hand side. And once again, I'm not watching the needle. The needle is going to do whatever it's going to do. What I'm watching is keeping this piece of fabric or the foot right up against the edge of it. You'll hear the, the machine is actually a bit noisier now and that's because it's trying to go through one, two, three, four, six layers of fabric and the wadding. So that's why it's actually going through quite a lot of stuff here. When I do the vertical, um, cover the vertical joins, it will be going through even more layers when it goes over these, but it, the machines do handle it, it's not a problem. This is the back of the quilt and the coloured thread is where I was stitching on the tape on the back. There is actually a little bit of purple thread that can be seen closer to the edge there. And I think it's pretty much underneath that one. So that's what the back of it ends up looking like. If I had used purple thread in the needle when I was sewing this on the back, it would be even harder to see those stitches. And finally, we have the front of the join covered and the back of the join covered. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? So this is the final result on the right side of the quilt. You can see one row of stitching on the left and one row on the right. When I was sewing the back tape on, those, the rows of stitching are now actually covered up by the right side tape. As I add more strips on to the bottom, I will do the same thing. I will put the back tape on and then the front. Because the tape goes the whole way across the quilt, it doesn't jog around when it gets to these joins. It's just straight and consistent in width the whole way. So did you know that you could change the needle drop position on a straight stitch? There are lots of things in our machines that if you know they're there, they really can make your life a lot easier. Top stitching is much easier if you know how to move that needle. See you next time.